Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Archive Insights. So for this week, I find a really cool paper on Archive, and it's titled Investigating Human Priors for Playing Video Games. The basic question in this paper that the authors want to investigate is why are humans so good at understanding and solving new complex environments that they've never seen before? Take this game for example, any typical human would need about one minute to actually figure out that you have to climb the stairs, get all the way to the top of the level, jump over the enemy and then get to the princess in order to finish the level. But if you take any of uh, the state of the art reinforcement learning algorithms that we have available now today, so the very best ones, they would need about 4 million frames in order to solve this level successfully and consistently. And if you calculate those 4 million frames, if you recalculate that into human time, if you take a game engine running at about 30 frames per second, that amounts to about 37 hours of non-stop playing. So that's about 2,000 times slower than any human being. And so the whole question in this paper is why are humans so good at this? And obviously you would say, well, that's because we have a lot of prior information. We know that ladders are to be climbed and that faces that don't smile are probably not that friendly, so you might not want to run into them. But the whole question in this paper was how important are each of those different priors and is there a way to quantify the effects that these things have on our learning ability? My name is Xander and welcome to another episode of Archive Insights. So in the last few years, a lot of very significant progress has been made in machine learning and also very specifically in the subfield of reinforcement learning. Most of these advances come from big research entities like Google DeepMind, OpenAI and large universities at the forefront of AI research. And so these advances show us that we're now able to train agents that are able to learn very complicated behavior in dynamic environments using what we call a reward signal. So instead of showing this agent specific examples of what actions it should take in a given situation, this is what we call supervised learning, instead this agent is free to act in the environment any way that it wants, but it has a signal, the reward signal, that it tries to optimize over time. And so these algorithms, they've actually shown some very impressive results in a wide variety of tasks that has caused many people to claim that we might be seeing the very early seeds of general AI. But despite these very impressive achievements, we are still very, very far away from achieving anything that is close to human level learning performance. Um, so our algorithms that we have right now, they're very good at general learning, but they have what we call a very bad sample efficiency. And that basically means that you need to give them a lot of training frames before they are able to figure out what behavior is actually desired in this environment. And to explain this difference between our algorithms and human performance, a lot of researchers are now pointing to the embedded knowledge that humans bring to a new task that allows us to find optimal uh, solutions to a given problem much faster than any algorithm that we currently have. And so before we dive into the paper itself, let's look at some very funny examples of the things we already know about human psychology. So one of the things that we figured out very early on is that newborn babies, they actually have this tendency for imitation. So if a father will stick out his tongue, then even though the child has no idea what's going on, we will see that very often they will imitate this action. So that is some, something that we have embedded in our genetics. And then we also have this very strong tendency to pay attention to faces. So a newborn child, if given a lot of images, uh, will always look at the faces first. And then there are also some human priors that are not really built into us genetically, but that we learn at a very young age. One of these examples is object permanence. So object permanence points to the fact that if you have a given object and the object is suddenly hidden from sight, that we know that that object is still there. Now we'll cover it up, watch this. And she wonders, what did you do, Neil? What toys? I don't know where they went. Wow, that is amazing. Where did they go? <laughs> it is incredible. If, it, if it's not there, it doesn't exist. Right. Freaking genius. 
In human babies, the uh, concept of object permanence usually arises at the age of about two months. Whereas in chimpanzees and other monkeys, this arises much, much faster and much earlier. So here you can see a monkey which has exactly the same age as this human baby. And you can see that in this monkey, the concept of object permanence is already present. So in order to test the presence and the influence of different kinds of human priors, what the researchers did is they took the game, but then they deliberately replaced some of the game objects with random textures. And the idea is that if you do this cleverly, you can actually mask away some forms of prior knowledge and then look at the performance change by human players to figure out which forms of prior knowledge are actually very crucial in solving a game like this. And before we go further, I would like all of you to just click on the link below and try one of the adjusted game versions to see how difficult it actually is if you are deprived of your prior knowledge. And as you'll see, it's not that easy. So with the original game without any texture remapping, a typical human needs about 1.4 minutes to solve the level. The first adjustment to the game was changing the object semantics. So what they did is that instead of seeing a key or a door, the uh, human players would simply see a square of uniform color. So what this does is that it takes away our prior knowledge about the properties of an object. And what was very obvious is that in the original version, all the human players reached the key first and then went to the door, whereas in the remap textures, that was no longer the case. So this clearly shows that humans use their prior knowledge of objects to guide their actions. After remapping the textures, the average game time went up from 1.4 minutes to about 4.4 minutes. In the second adjusted game version, the researchers decided to simply hide the object locations altogether. So now all the places where the player can freely move around have been masked by a square of uniform color. And in this version of the game, the average time for a human player to solve the level went up to nine minutes. We didn't know where objects were, but it was still pretty clear what the terrain looked like. We knew where the platforms were and where the ladders were. In the new version of the game, they remap all of those textures as well. And we call this removal of affordance. And it turns out that removing affordance is not as bad as removing object semantics. And then at the end, the researchers decided they wanted to go hardcore mode, so they rotated gravity by 90 degrees, they switched the left and right control keys, and they remapped all of the affordance textures. And well, you know, even the game designers themselves couldn't solve the level anymore. Point proven, we got it guys. So by quantifying the effects of these adjusted game versions on the human player time, they were able to list up some of the priors that are present in human beings and how important they can be for solving a task like this. And so we can see from this result that something as simple as just knowing what an object is can be very crucial for solving a complex environment. And then the researchers did something really interesting. They used a state-of-the-art reinforcement learning algorithm called A3C to try and solve the same adjusted game versions that the human players had seen. And it turns out that the reinforcement learning agents had no problem whatsoever with the adjusted versions where the priors were removed. Even in the game version where all of the object textures were remapped, the reinforcement learning agent needed about exactly the same amount of training frames in order to solve this level. To wrap things up, humans use very strong priors that allow them to quickly discover optimal solutions in situations they've never been before. And this is the main thing that is currently lacking in our reinforcement learning algorithms is that they don't have this pre-built knowledge about how the world works. As a final note though, I want to include that object priors are not always a good thing. If you think about the AlphaGo system that I dealt with previously, um, you can very clearly see that by having this algorithm trained from scratch and therefore getting rid of this prior where it's sort of based on human knowledge, on human gameplay, it can actually reach a better performance. There are other examples as well that if you uh, switch the gravity of the game, then humans will all of a sudden make very, very bad decisions and do much worse than an objective agent that doesn't have this predefined notion of physics. And so this shows that while human priors can be very efficient at solving novel tasks in new environments, they can also be a hindrance. And I think that this is something we are seeing in quantum physics right now, where our human knowledge that we have gathered over many, many years of science and living in the natural world is sort of being defied by these very strange laws in quantum mechanics that are very, very unnatural to us and therefore also very difficult. 
I'd like to thank the researchers for a very interesting paper. I hope everybody learned something and I'd love to see you again in the next episode of Archive Insights.